This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I want to talk about what may be the best Bitcoin book ever. It's a novel. It's not a nonfiction work. It's called Mandibles, but I think in many ways that it may be the best introduction to Bitcoin, even though it doesn't really mention it. It only mentions it in one point, as we're going to talk about. Minor spoilers alert for this video. I want to thank Matt O'Dell for recommending this book. I've seen him constantly mention it on Twitter, so over vacation, I finally sat down and read and listened to it. Mandibles begins with the following epigraph, quote, collapse is a sudden, involuntary, and chaotic form of simplification. That's a quote from James Rickard's Currency Wars. It's a perfect epigraph, I think, for this novel, which is, as I said, a dystopian novel, novel that covers the effects of a gigantic and extended financial crisis and the ensuing social collapse on the Mandible family. This is the name of the family from 2029 to 2047. So it's sent, set in the not so distant future. And it covers these four generations of the Mandible family, including the 97 year old wealthy patriarch of the family, who I think inherited all of his money. He's getting royalties from some diesel engine uh, part or something like that. So this family, they start off quite wealthy thanks to inherited money. Everyone's waiting for the patriarch to die so they can get their hands on some of it. And then it turns out, obviously, that things don't go exactly as they're expecting. I think it's set in 2029. One reason is, of course, that all the talk about what's going to happen in 2030 uh, by various groups like the World Economic Forum, for example. And then, of course, 2029 is the 100th anniversary of the U.S. stock market crash in the beginning of the Great Depression. And so it's almost like we have to relearn these les lessons every 100 years every hundred years. This is what the cover looks like. The author is uh, Lionel Shriver, I probably should have mentioned. And you can see the pun here on what's written on US dollars, In God We Trust. And this says, In God We Trusted, uh, The Mandibles of Family 2029 to 2047. And the book is basically divided into two sections. The first section is called 2029. The second section is called 2047. And I have to say, it is a quite good novel. I couldn't stop once I started reading and listening to it. Mandibles was published in 2016, but in many ways, it's a very prophetic book. And I think it reads quite differently after the events of 2020, 2021 than it would otherwise. But it's hard to really, you have to pinch yourself as you're reading this and realize that it was written in 2016 when it might have seen a much stranger book than it does today. So Mandibles includes many things that we've talked about on this channel and some things we've alluded to. It includes the collapse, the complete collapse and devaluation of the US dollar. US dollar is replaced globally as a reserve currency by a BRICS-like currency called the Bancor, which of course was originally named by John Maynard Keynes. This is a 2029 version of it. There's also a reset of the U.S. national debt, a sort of not really a jubilee, but basically the U.S. defaults on its debt, rendering all treasuries worthless. And this is called the great renunciation in the book. Crazy money printing, hyperinflation, shortages of everything, including toilet paper and basic groceries, which might have seemed a little bit unlikely in, in the America of 2016. But in the America of 2020 and 2021, we certainly saw things like this happen. Other things that happen in the novel, cash is banned because it's too private and it can't be tracked by the government. Gold is seized by the government in a, in a sort of remake of Executive Order 6102, which was Roosevelt's version of it. But gold is again seized again, and the government authorities go door to door trying to seize it. Farms are seized and nationalized because there are famines, and the state takes over and does a very bad job in a little bit like Soviet Russia travel bans and movement passports as well to, in an attempt to control the American population. It's really cool. There's a citadel. They don't call it a Bitcoin citadel, but there is something called a citadel, as you'll see as you read the novel where people flee to. And then we have state secession in the U.S. And one state in particular, I don't want to give away which state in particular, absorbs all of the freedom refugees who don't want to be chipped, who don't want to have CBDCs, etc. You also, uh, the population gets chips embedded in their brain. If you want to get a job, you have to get a chip in your brain. And this contains your CBDC like money and can be wiped if you say or do the wrong thing. So in, in many ways, this was this novel was even ahead of what China was doing with CBDCs. And it really gives you a feeling for what would happen if CBDCs were allowed to come to the US and come to the West as well. Many governments are working on it. There's also this, uh, your classic idiotic Keynesian professor of economics who the whole time keeps writing treatises, keeps telling everyone that inflation is a good thing for them, and keeps telling them that everything's going to bounce back. 
And of course, he's wrong again and again and again. And I won't say what happens to his um, his profession in general. FDIC insurance is being funded by money printing in this novel, something we came very close to in the beginning of 2022. And the only jobs in this novel that are really left in the economy are healthcare jobs, taking care of a much wealthier and aging population, senior population, and then assistance jobs, taking care of the elderly who are very rich, while everyone else is very poor. What if something like China, Lebanon, Turkey happened to the US? This is a little bit what mandibles is like an economic collapse combined with a surveillance state, which becomes more and more powerful. And I'd say perhaps the best way to summarize the mandibles as a novel is it's our future, certainly the US's future, if Bitcoin had never been invented. As I said, we learn in the novel that Bitcoin has failed. It's the only time that it's mentioned in the whole novel, and we never learn why it failed. But I would say this is a forgivable prediction in 2016 when the fork wars were just getting started and there was still uncertainty that Bitcoin would still be around. I would say in 2022, there's zero uncertainty over whether Bitcoin is going to still be around. It may do well, as I believe. It may not do well, but it's not something that's going to disappear and fail in a really spectacular in a really spectacular way. It's just been around too, too much. So the Mandibles, in many ways, this is what makes it such a good Bitcoin book, is it doesn't, you don't have to accept Bitcoin to read it. It's just a very compelling story. Some of the characters are very smart and likable. And so I think it's a nice entree for many people into the world of Bitcoin and many things that Bitcoiners believe. I'd say other fun things in the novel, there's a Chelsea Clinton administration, Kids, some of the kids are named after search engines or browsers. There's kids named Goog and Bing. Seems a little strange, a little bit unrealistic, but there are lots of little jokes like that in the novel. Also, the words U.S. Treasuries have become slang for BS or garbage. So you, you'll hear people in the novel say, you're talking treasury kid, or he's an utter T-bell. And this is part of the great renun renunciation when the U.S. doesn't make good on its debt. It becomes a, a synonym for garbage. U.S. Treasuries becomes a synonym for garbage. Mexico builds a wall to keep out starving Americans who are fleeing south. So it turns out that Mexico actually does pay for the wall, but it's to protect themselves. The latest popular music is called Beast Rap, comprising bird calls, wolf howls, lion roars, cat purrs, and barking. And then finally, the Second Amendment has been reinterpreted in this novel by scholars to exclude individual gun ownership. Only the police and military, quote unquote, militias have the right to bear arms in America's future. There's an 85% capital gains tax. And really a whole segment of the population hates their lives so much that they pay to put themselves to sleep for five years at a time so they can sort of live in their dreams in this drug stupor and they're hooked up to nutrition so they can do this. And they just pray that once they wake up, they can find some, some, some more money so they can, they can go back to sleep for another five years. So it's quite bleak in many ways. It's also a novel filled with lots of humor, lots of very, very interesting ideas. As the book's protagonist, Welling says, nothing, quote, nothing is, nothing made up is more interesting than what's actually happening. We're in a novel. So there's this self-referential quality to the novel as well. And there's also a character in the novel that basically uh, is a reflection, I would say, of Lionel Shriver herself. Aunt, uh, Aunt uh, Enola or Noli is, seems to be a Shriver inside of her own novel. Mandibles, as I said, it's a great book to recommend to someone who likes fiction, especially dystopian fiction or science fiction set in the near future, but really has no interest in Bitcoin. I think this is sort of a, a nice way of getting through to people who rather come to Bitcoin through fiction rather than reading the Bitcoin standard or listening to my channel or something like that. So I'll definitely be recommending it to a lot of people. If you want to go down the rabbit hole a little further, Matt O'Dell on his podcast, Citadel Dispatch, did a great interview with, with Shriver that I really enjoyed. I'll link to this in the description notes below. I think it's one of the things that she men mentions in this interview with Odell is that it's unrealistic that this crisis effect affected this huge crisis, financial and social crisis affected only the U.S. and was not instead a global crisis. This is one of the things that happens then now everyone in Europe and Asia is sort of looking down on the U.S. and wondering what happened to it. I think uh, this is unrealistic and Shriver agrees. She does mention in Odell's interview that this was done on purpose, purpose simply to make her job as a, an author less difficult to sort of narrow 
the scope so it didn't become an international novel. Novel. She's not. She said uh, she's not trying to be the next Tolstoy or Dostoevsky. So, so there is a simplification, but still, I would say it's it's still a quite complex and long novel. And um, it's as you follow the characters and what happens to them, I think it's really quite interesting. Here's a reading hack I thought I'd mention that um, some of you might find helpful. If money's not an issue and you don't mind spending a little bit more money for your books, I always buy three versions of every book that I read. I buy an audible version for the car, for the airplane, for bedtime, anytime I don't want to have to um, read a book using my eyes. I buy a Kindle version, which I find very useful for doing a word search. I found it very helpful for doing this review, for example. And then I buy a paperback version just for carrying around and for when I want to read the book, but I want to avoid screen time. I don't want to read it on Kindle or listen to it on Audible. And also the nice thing about having a paperback, if you enjoy the book when you're done with it, you can give the paperback to a friend and you can sort of pass it on so other people get to read the book. I think it's also nice to triple support authors that you like. So this is one hack that you might find useful that I've been doing doing for a while now. Another way to support the author, Lionel Shriver, it looks like Matt O'Dell set her up with a Bitcoin wallet and is trying to get her interested into Bitcoin. So I will link to this tweet in the description notes below. Here's a Bitcoin address that you can send a donation to if you read the novel and enjoy the novel and want to send some Bitcoin towards Lionel Shriver. It'd be really great if she were to become a Bitcoiner. And I think she definitely has the mentality of a Bitcoiner, as you'll, as you'll learn when you listen to Odell's interview with her on Citadel Dispatch. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.